Hello and welcome to another Weka tutorial. So this is uh, this tutorial is preceded by another tutorial tutorial where I demonstrated you how you can use the string to word vector uh, unsupervised attribute filter uh, for document classification task. So in this in this tutorial, I think uh, you're you're getting much more clear picture what's going on and why I actually showed uh, that filter in my last tutorial. So if you have seen my last tutorial then you must know that we used a train file. It's an R file um, relation called train. It has two attributes. The first one is document. It's the string type attribute. And the second one is the class of the document whether uh, it's yes if it is talking about crude oil and it's no if it is not talking about crude oil it's talking about cooking oils. So we had six instances here, and you know that in the in the quote marks, this is just one sentence. And I'm assuming that my document, the first document I'm having here, it only contains a single sentence, but it can have 100, 1,000, 1 million sentences there. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just assuming that my first document and my sixth document to up to my sixth document, they are all having just one sentence, and. Uh, we, according to that sentence, these are these documents are classified as yes if they are talking about crude oil, and they are t uh, they, they are labeled as no if they are not talking about crude oil. Okay, now for this tutorial, I'm, I also created a test file, and in this test file, you can see that I'm having the same amount of uh, attributes and that their names and their types are the same. Uh, so it has a document type of string attribute and a class having uh, two, two types of uh, binary classes, yes or no. Uh, and that's my second attribute. But here, the, in the data section, you can see that uh, I have four documents here. And also, again, I'm assuming that my documents here, the test documents here, they're all, all only having uh, one sentence each. So the first one is having oil platforms extract crude oil. And we have a question mark here because I'm not going to tell my in my test file whether it's, an yes, it's a yes or no. Uh, it's the job of my classification algorithm to develop a model on my training file to say uh, whether this document is talking about crude oil or not, whether it's, it belongs to yes class or no class. So we have four documents here and each contains uh, one sentence. So this is my test file. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can, you can get, uh, get a model using this train.r train file. And uh, my model will be able to know the patterns found in these, in these uh, document texts. And I'm going to use the string to word vector. So using that filter, using using that filter, I'm going to convert the strings in these training dot r files uh, into some word vectors. And using those word vectors, I'm actually going to classify. I'm de actually developing or building a model using a J48 or any uh, any kind of algorithm. And using that model on on this test file, I'm going to tell you whether these question marks here uh, belong to yes class or no class. So that's my test. That's how document classification works. So I'm going to Weka Explorer and I'm going to open the train file here. Okay, so in my last tutorial, I showed you that we use a string to word vector. You can go to uh, a filter, then you can select unsupervised filter, attribute filter and then you can find the string to word vector at the very end uh, of the filter list. But I'm not going to use this uh, right here. It is just selected there. I'm not going to click any apply there. So this is kind of tricky here and um, I'm just going to demonstrate what you can do so that you can develop a model using that train. It is using this train file and then you are applying uh, the model on the test file. Now we are going to classify tab. And here in the classify tab, I'm choosing a different kind of classifier. I've never showed it or demonstrated it in any of my tutorials. I'm going to uh, select meta classifiers. And in the meta classifiers, you can see that we have an option called filter classifier. So we select on that. Now we're going to play with the options here. We click on the filter classifier 
and this is a generic object editor and you can see that the, this is an option this class is for running an arbitrary classifier on data that has been passed through an arbitrary filter so why is it necessary so let me tell you in your training file we, when we converted the strings into word vector um, there were 34 word vectors you can always go back to my previous tutorial to see to validate my statement you had 34 word vectors and one plus attribute so we had 35 uh, attributes in my training file if I use uh, that string to word vector at uh, filter now if you if you if we're having a test filter sorry if you're having a test file just like this so if you convert these texts into word vector it doesn't necessarily uh, produce uh, 34 attributes because it, because it, it all depends on the amount of uh, words the unique number of words a number of presents there and so on and so forth so if you apply that filter on test test.arf then maybe uh, you're having uh, your number of attributes is, are go is going to be 20. So your train file will contain 35 attributes and your test file will co contain 25, 20 attributes. Then they are, they, they are, there is a mismatch between train file and test file. And in this way, if you're doing your experiment, you're getting an error for, from Weka because your train file and test file they should have exact the same number of attributes their name has to the names are going to be the same and their types are going to be the same in order to have the compatibility between the train file and the test file so in this way we cannot do that what but there are some ways so this is the way how we can do that so for example we are trying to build a model we're trying to build a model using a classifier from J48 algorithm. So J48 will be applied on our train.r file. And here, we're as a filter, we are going to choose the same filter. Uh, so we are going to go to unsupervised filter attribute. And at the very end, you'll see that we, ha we're, we have string to word vector. We choose that. And that has been chosen. And we click OK. So what it means is that your filtered classifier option will provide you to apply the filter that you have just chosen, which is string to word vector. That will be applied on your test set, and that will be applied on your training set. But if you do it separately, then maybe, for example, you are getting 35 attributes for your training set and 20 attributes for your test set, then you are having a compatibility issue in Weka. So here we are choosing the supply test set option and we are going to click on set. We're opening the file and here I'm just going to uh, select the test file that I just produced. So that's my test.r file that I've shown you already that this is my test.r file. I just uh, provided that to Weka I'm saying that okay build a model uh, on this training set on this training set that I just uploaded build a model using J48 classification algorithm and apply that model on this test set but apply string to word vector filter to both my training set and test set so if I just click on start now then you can see that we're all having zeros so don't worry so because uh, that's usual because this is uh, the in this result pane we are we are actually viewing the precision recall and f measure and weka doesn't know the labels of these test files because you didn't provide it um, uh, provide this information to weka which class is actually represented by the question marks here so we are having all zeros here but how do you know that uh, that uh, what, what how do you know the predictions of of your uh, model on the test set you just supplied so in order to know that you have to click on the more options and you can see that we have an option unchecked by default which is output prediction you have to check it and then click OK now we are going to run the same uh, same thing we're just going to start it all over and again we're having zeros don't worry we go to the top and you can see here are the predictions made by the model on the test set so we have four instances if you don't believe then you can go to the test.r file we are having four instances and now we are going back to explorer 
you can see that our first act first instance this actual label was question mark yes that's correct and it was predicted as yes okay the second one was predicted as no so as the third one and fourth one so we are having some errors because if you go to the test file then you can see that okay the first one is really talk the first document is really talking about crude oil that's yes that's for sure but the second one is canola oil so that's no that's also correct but the third one is Iraq has significant oil reserves that's actually talking about crude oils that's not talking about uh, uh, cooking oil like olive oil so that's a, that's a no uh, so sorry that should be an yes should be a yes but that was classified as no so that's an error there are different types of cooking oil so this is also a no because this is talking about uh, cooking oils not uh, not the crude oil so we're just having problem with the third instance the classification of the third instance here the rest is just fine so uh, in this way it, it, what we have done here is we're just uh, using we, we just use the train file to train our model using a j48 classifier and we just use the test set to see whether to, to observe the performance of our model using J48 algorithm but the main thing is that we didn't use the strings present in the test file or in the train file we converted both uh, the strings of the both of the files into word vectors and we have done it using a filter classifier that's a meta classifier that we have chosen and in this way we have we have trained our j48 with the texts of six documents and their labels and we have uh, we have applied that model on a test set comprising four documents and unknown labels and we are finding what labels are are provided to those four documents uh, according to our training data uh, using the Explorer. I hope that helps and that's pretty much uh, all uh, of, of the basics of uh, document classification in Weka. I hope that helps. Don't forget to subscribe or click the like button if you really uh, are interested to get more updates and um, uh, keep watching my tutorials. Thank you very much.